then, in these last few weeks, big money has gotten involved to the extent, my opinion, it, it has just made a mockery of, of our city elections. The next thing is I worry that, that uh, we have, by creating a, a, a not-for-profit, a private not-for-profit, we have circumvented the open meetings, open records rules. And I've seen, and we, are, we have all witnessed, an atrocity with regard to the failure to have records open in these last political campaigns. That's a, that's a blot on the history of this city, I, in my opinion, that we will have difficulty ever erasing. And, and to start a new entity. I think there are um, some intangibles, given the timing, that are independent of the efficacy of, of this group or this idea. And we are coming off the most expensive, traumatic, non-transparent set of elections in our city's history. And I think that there, there is a need for healing. There, there is anxiety and stress among significant uh, numbers of the populace when they see our, our fire and police uh, in conflict with with what they perceive as city and a, a non-transparent entity that to this day remains unidentified. So when Steve Lackmeyer broke this story in the Oklahoman on Friday, there's an explosion of Facebook activity and blog activity on like OKC Talk and, and except for the few comments asking for more information, they are universally not just negative but extraordinarily negative. Very fearful. Um, it's it's the sense of urgency that, that we move forward with this, um, that, that is creating questions, and, and it centers on the lack of transparency. That, that we are um, the conspiracy theorists and, and those are, are concerned about this perceived plutocratic fusion of the city apparatus with a, a very small number of extraordinarily wealthy and politically charged individuals. And uh, I think that what, what's concerning to a lot of people is that you are transferring a city apparatus, which is under the open records, and you're, and you're doing all this um, to the exclusion of the Open Records Act. I think that's what's, what's pouring gas on the fire of this fear of the lack of transparency in this context. I mean, it might be different six months ago or even six months from now. But to do it today, one week after, after these uh, traumatic elections, I think you have, to, you have to take it in that context. wasn't here to see most of that. Um, and despite my concerns about what I consider to be a obscenity that occurred during that election, uh, none of you should take that personally. I'm, I'm so pleased to serve with all the four people that were elected this time. Um, uh, the obscenity that I refer to, you had nothing to do with. And uh, I, I firmly believe that. But uh, I, I can't, I can't, um, and I will not, S stop commenting on what I think uh, was a, a terrible occurrence in the history of this city to have these elections be uh, so the, the, the contributors to them uh, not be willing to put their names forward. I think that's a, I think that's a mistake. I think that's a blot on democracy as I see it, and I uh, I, I hate it personally. Not don't take it personal, any of you. Don't because I don't mean it. Because I don't think any of you had anything to do with it. But that doesn't change how bad I think it was. That I was. I 
was pleased with the conversation, and I don't think what I'll add is, is a great deal different than what I've heard on this, but I want to say three things very clearly and quickly, if I may. Number one, as Suzanne Bardot and I sat reading the paper this past week and became aware of this issue, the first thing I'd like you to know was, was our comments were about what a great job our city leadership has done over the past 15, 20 years and how pleased we are with the direction and a sense and a belief and a feeling that we can trust the leadership of this city. And that's a comment that I realize that has been made many times in many public gatherings. Uh, so I say that with sincerity and I want you guys to know that. Guys mean in general sense. I hope that you will do everything to maintain both that direction and that sense of trust. And the first thing that concerned me about this in the paper Pete, you alluded to, Larry, you, you brought up is, please, however you decide to run it is, is fine, whether it's this entity or, or otherwise. But if you go with this entity, please don't let this statement of, well, we're not quite sure how open records will apply, give us full, absolute, total transparency. And that ties into the second thing. While I appreciate and value and think these people care and have done a great job, I'm sorry, I don't want just the Oklahoma City Chamber and Heritage Hills and Nichols Hills and Gallardia making the decisions of what will be brought to the table and patting us on the head and saying, we'll take care of you. If you believe that South Oklahoma City and Northeast Oklahoma City haven't been stepchildren, then you believe differently than I do. I raised my children in South Oklahoma City. Now I'm a wealthy Northsider. But I believe South Oklahoma City and Northeast Oklahoma City need more representation on this decision-making board. 